What's up guys, still taking myself to school here, I'm bringing you guys along if you want, saving this for my friends and family and anybody really putting it on YouTube, etc. Um, this is my basics video in grounding and earthing. Some people call it earthing. It's not just woo woo, it's not just hippie stuff, it's far more important than we think. I'm about to teach you why. All right, let's get started. You have your house, if you can see it, I drew with a green pen a line going into the ground and the skeleton of our house has all the electrical wires inside of it. All these electrical wires that are connected to outlets going all around inside the house all have a copper ground wire. And that copper ground wire that's going all throughout the house, every single circuit, every start and every finish of every circuit has a ground. And the grounds are all connected to the ground rod that's outside. I've pounded many a ground rods into the ground outside myself. So I understand them, I've seen them, and I know how they work firsthand. Why do we have ground rods? If lightning strikes the tip of this house, and this is a steel roof, a metal roof, lightning strikes it, that lightning is gonna try to go somewhere and it's going to dissipate. And when it goes through, it's gonna, it's gonna try to discharge somewhere, all right? And we don't want a discharge to happen in an attic and create a fire. We want that discharge to go run straight through that grounding wire and boom, go out the bottom, out the ground rod, out the house. Imagine taking a gun and shooting a bullet into the water. When that bullet hits the water, poof, it doesn't kill the guy in the water. If you're underwater, you don't get shot in the back five feet underwater from a bullet because the bullet, as soon as it hits the water, the energy disperses like this. The same way when lightning strikes, the tip of the house goes through all the ground wires and doesn't cause a fire in the house and it goes and it disperses in the ground. That's what we're told it's for. It's also for just understand that there is a static charge and there's positive. There's too much positive charge. And what does too, too much positive charge create? Fires. When there's too much positive charge or there's all these little disconnections and things causing sparks, what we get is fire. And say you're not grounded, your entire circuit and system can get too hot and cause fires. And I know this for quite a few different reasons. My buddy mentioned solar. So he, there were these uh, solar on the roof, solar panels. And the old solar panels 15 to 20 years ago weren't grounded and they would go and they'd be repairing them and repairing them and trying to replace them etc they were all burning up because they had too much charge they weren't grounded so they were all burning up because they had too much positive charge which was creating heat which was burning elements out all types of things in them it was burning them up they held this little static charge and so your house for endless reasons will have too much charge if it's not grounded other than just lightning there's so many reasons i don't even want to get into it's endless and we are the same way so just as a house is a complete circuit and it's grounded we also are electrical beings we have our own electrical circuit and we are electrical and chemical yes we are biology we are electric beings guys we are transmitters you got to start looking at yourself as an electric being so us, we work the same way as this house. Too much positive charge creates fire. And when I say fire, what do I mean by that? I mean inflammation. I don't know if you can see it, but I got little orange fire marks. I got an orange fire mark on his head. I got a headache. I got shoulder pain. I got hip pain. I got knee pain. I got ankle pain. All of that fire is inflammation. Why? Because this guy is not grounded. He's got a little sad face because he's got shoes on. He's got rubber, rubber sold shoes on. Rubber is an insulator. It keeps you from being grounded. When people are earthing and being hippies, they're putting their bare feet on the ground and instantaneously reducing inflammation. Because rubber shoes are an insulator and they keep us from getting these negatively charged electrons, which attach to the positively charge, which complete this circuit we have. It's an electromagnetic circuit. Think of the ground as like a trickle charge on a motorcycle or a boat. It's not like you're gaining all this power from these electrons. But what's happening is, imagine you're being put on this trickle charge and your battery system is creating a home an electromagnetic homeostasis connected to the earth. When your bare feet are on the ground, the electrons come up through the ground, okay, and they reduce your inflammation, and now you're not overheating. You don't carry the static charge that everybody does that's wearing rubber shoes that never grounds during the day or at night or sometimes ever. Everybody is in chronic pain and chronically inflamed because we're not constantly grounding, getting rid of that. Animals in the wild are grounded 24-7. So if animals are grounded 24-7, hmm, maybe that's the reason why they don't have heart disease and cancer 
Well, except for the ones that are in polluted and toxic areas that we polluted and intoxicated. Animals in the wild don't get the diseases we get. Our dogs get the diseases we get because they are also hardly ever grounded on carpets, plastic carpets, linoleum floors, plastic flooring, rubber flooring, etc. They're not grounded either. And these dogs that live with us, our pets, get our diseases too. Now think about, think about what uh, pharmaceuticals are. What are pharmaceuticals made of? When did the petroleum industry, think Rockefeller, U.S. Standard Oil, etc. When did the petroleum industry take over medicine via force? And all of our medicine and pharmaceuticals became petroleum-based. Remember, rubber shoes, petroleum-based, those are insulators. What does, what, does our what do our pharmaceuticals really do? What are they really doing down to the cellular level? Think about it, all right? So again, this person, here's your asphalt, here's your ground underneath. They're not connected, they're not getting grounded, they're not, they're not, they're becoming inflamed. There's all your little inflame marks, all right? So every day, get your bare feet on the ground, in the morning, in the evening, etc. If you have a migraine or a headache, I challenge you to go outside at some point and just walk out there, put your two feet on the ground, and breathe in and out. Eight seconds in, eight seconds out. And just get out there, look at the sun, look at the moon, you know, be thankful, calm down. And I guarantee you, I almost guarantee you, you may be super sick and ridiculous, but I almost guarantee you your headache will go away in no time. If you just stay there and continue to do that, that headache will go away a lot faster than if you didn't do that. I promise you that. So again, being grounded reduces inflammation. Anytime we have pain, we have inflammation. You can't have pain without inflammation. Look into that. It's true. You cannot have pain without inflammation. So if we are grounded, we have less pain. We have less chronic disease. Say you're always stressed and you have chronic elevated cortisol levels, which is a lot of our, when you have all these diseases and stressors and situations going on, your cortisol levels rise and you're always inflamed or you're always eating inflammatory foods, these glutens, you know, the dairies, etc. All types of things happen, causing us to have MS, Alzheimer's, autoimmune disease. Imagine Alzheimer's, you've got inflammation of your brain because you've been a diabetic your whole life and your brain's inflamed because of the sugar, because you don't understand how the fake sugar and the crap sugar, how it really affects your brain. And you have Alzheimer's because of brain inflammation. Say it's not sugar and you still have an inflamed brain. And that's why you have Alzheimer's. What if you grounded yourself and instantaneously, instantaneously reduced inflammation? Because that's what grounding literally does. It is instantaneous, it's steady, and, it, and you start to get results immediately. I'm not kidding, immediately. Now, does it work better cumulatively? Yes, of course. The more you do it, the better. So say you're super, super, you're in a lot of pain. I've got MS, I've got lupus, I've got, I've got arthritis. The damage you've done has to be undone. But the moment you start grounding, you start healing. And that pain, say you ground, is going to be reduced. It's going to be more of a calmed pain because you're in the healing process. And that also creates a feeling similar to pain while you're healing. But you're reversing it immediately. And the more you continue to ground, you can absolutely reverse inflammation. All types of pain from MS, Alzheimer's, autoimmune disease. And all you got to do is walk outside and get your bare feet on the ground. You know? It's, it's not crazy to understand this stuff. This stuff isn't just woo-woo. It's the real deal. Your body works just like the freaking house. Don't go up in flames. You don't want your house to go up in flames. You don't want your house to be running hot. You don't want those electrical wires in your house all to be really hot at all times. You know, could cause a fire, could cause inflammation. And that's what's happening inside your body. So it's the same way. You've got to ground yourself every single day. We have grounding mats. Uh, you know, grounding mats for your beds where you plug it into the grounding hole in the wall and the plug and you can, they send testers with them sometimes and your grounding mats will ground you inside your house because they're grounded to that plug that's inside the house. It goes all to that rod to here. So say you plugged into the ground in a plug and it's connected to here and that ground is connected to your grounding mattress that you can buy. You don't have to buy this stuff, but they, are, they do work. That means your bed is grounded. You're laying on a grounded mattress or a grounded mat now, as opposed to being on an insulated piece of plastic that increases and holds the static all night long. That, radiated, that radiation static charge that you have, that's not good for you. It creates dis-ease and inflammation. So 
Let's get to water. I have water pipes right here too. I have this in brown. This is a copper pipe. So all the piping in all the old world buildings, old world, all the older buildings even, used to be copper piping. Don't you remember that? Well, copper is a conductor. That water is grounded. That copper pipe used to go all the way into the ground, into your well. Think about what's happening. That copper pipe, if you know anything about structured water, living water, etc., that water is alive and it is grounded and it has everything it needs to mimic the Schumann resonance or the grounding of the earth. That is very important. Water that gets sent through PVC, what is PVC? Think rubber shoes, think pharmaceuticals. What is PVC? That water that's being sent through PVC, which is an insulator, is dead water by the time it gets to you. It's dead. You want that water to be conductive as possible. Water is conductive itself, but it's not a great conductor. So if we put it in a copper pipe, it's way more conductive. And if it's coming from the right source, it's an extremely valuable living water source. Why do you think all of our pipes are PVC now? Hmm, think Rockefeller, US Standard Oil, et cetera. See what's going on? Let's keep going with water a little bit. This is my little twist. Distilled water is negatively charged. I have a water distiller. Why do I believe in distilled water? Because I think, I believe in this. I think we have too many positively charged ions in our body. Distilled water is a completely negative charge. So when you drink distilled water, or when I drink distilled water, I drink it for flushing purposes. I don't drink it necessarily for hydrating purposes as much as I do flushing purposes. That's a whole nother conversation, and it's a good one, but we'll do it some other time. But I drink distilled water for flushing purposes because the negatively charged, negative charge of this water will attach to the positively charged ions in your body and you can flush them out, heavy metals, all types of things that don't need to be there, free radicals, etc. So, oh, but distilled water leaches minerals. I know, that's what you're taught in medical school or that's what you think, that's what you read, that's what you see. Yes, it will leach minerals, inorganic minerals that aren't being absorbed in your body. All the organic minerals that can be absorbed in your body are being absorbed in your body, okay? So you have a bunch of synthetic fortified vitamins and minerals that you're taking in these pills that your body isn't absorbing and you're peeing out. And they're really, you may even be taking heavy metals or soft metals and all this stuff that doesn't need to be there that your body isn't utilizing because it's not organic. Plants metabolize. Plants and animals metabolize those vitamins and minerals for us. And then we eat the the, the animal flesh and we eat the plant. The plant metabolizes that for us, okay? Then our body can take it, that's an organic mineral. If you take these synthetic inorganic minerals, they pile up in your body and they can actually do more harm than good. But the distilled water will grab that crap and flush it out magnetically. I know, leeches minerals. Oh, my friend got, almost killed himself drinking distilled water. Okay, so you were so sick and you're so full of toxins and poisons and positively charged ions, and you started chugging distilled water that you caused a Herxheimer reaction because your organs couldn't handle the amount of toxins and poisons you were trying to flush out of your body rapidly. Don't drink distilled water too fast. Do it slowly according to your body. This is not medical advice. I'm not a doctor, obviously. This is just my opinion. This is my opine opinion. Doesn't matter. You know, don't sue me. Don't kill the messenger. Don't shoot the messenger. Okay. But distilled water is not gonna leach organic minerals. It will get rid of the stuff that doesn't need to be there. But do it slowly if you're really sick, like let's be real, most of us are. So again, let's, let's just recap. Copper is our conductor. Our water used to be in copper. We used to throw pennies in wishing wells. Hmm. Copper is antifungal, antimicrobial, even antibacterial, I think. And so we used to throw all these pennies in these wishing wells. Maybe that meant something more than we know. And it came from something that made a lot more sense than we were ever taught. And maybe the copper pipes that used to be in the house should still be in our homes instead of PVC. All right. Get rid of the shoes for a little bit every single day. The more you ground, the better. There's plenty of ways to do it. Look up grounding mats, grounding sandals. I will destroy grounding sandals or grounding shoes in no time um, if they're not strong shoes. And so if, if I need shoes, I'm doing something that really requires it. If not, I'm going to be barefoot anyways. Um, I'm going barefoot way more these days to ground intentionally. All right, that's kind of it for this side. I'll conclude with my little twist on the back. Another little twist. When you're grounded, you're literally electrically connected to the earth and every living thing and everyone else that is grounded. Think about that, guys. So what happens when you're grounding and you're earthing is you, you are connected to the earth's 
resonance, the resonance of the earth. Think, if you know what the Schumann resonance is, understand that the earth has its own energy frequency and vibration, it has its own, I, we could call it a metronome, you know, like in music. All right, so that's a metronome in music if you know anything about recording music. So the earth has its own resonance, its energy, its frequency, and its vibration. And usually we refer to the Schumann resonance as the earth's natural resonance. So I'm really into frequency and vibrations and all that stuff. But imagine everybody was connected. We'll get into that in one second. Let me get back to this. So everybody's connected. I'm connected to the ground, which is connected to that tree, which is connected to this electrically, which is connected to that dog, which is connected to that lady over there sitting by her fire, which is connected to that tree over there. If everybody is grounded at the same time, if you've ever eaten psilocybin or done something uh, crazy like that psychedelically and been grounded i've actually had experiences where i understood and mentally experienced the connection of everything and everyone that was grounded around me and i'll explain that some other time to somebody that wants to hear it but it's long and it's kind of crazy and i wrote it out and so imagine if everybody was more connected we are disconnected because we're not grounded when we're wearing shoes, we're all disconnected and fighting to get more energy and regulate ourselves. We're all chaotic. We all have inflammation. We're all in pain. We're all spastic. We're all trying to get these caffeines because we don't have the free trickle charge of the earth that keeps us in our, our um, what, what did I call it? An electromagnetic symbiosis or uh, uh, what did I call it earlier? Um, we'll call it electromagnetic symbiosis. When you're in symbiosis with the earth, right, electromagnetically, and you have that Schumann resonance going on, you're connected, every system in your body is working the way it's supposed to. And it's, and it's got a rhythm to it, the way it should be. And so I found this out by myself organically. I'm sure it means something. It may be in a book somewhere, but this is just a random thing I found out the other night. 174 hertz is one of the nine core frequencies. Some people listen to 432 hertz music because of what it can do for the body healing wise, etc. Or 528, the love frequency, a very important frequency. There's nine core frequencies from 174 to 963. This is the first and lowest hertz frequency, all right? The lowest frequency of the, all the sacred ones that, you know, the nine core ones. I'm sure, there could be more. But that being the lowest one of all the nine core frequencies, I actually typed out all the nine core frequencies and divided them by the Schumann resonance for no reason, for fun. I just did it. All, not, out of all nine of them, 174 hertz was the only one. When I took 174 and divided it by the Schumann resonance, okay, 174 hertz, which is divine frequency, and I divided by the Schumann resonance, I came out with 22.2222222222. That is a rational number. It's not an irrational number. An irrational number would be 22.5764964325 see what i'm saying that is a rational number meaning there is a connection between these two things that mean something there's something of importance that connects these two i just so happen to get lucky and find that and find a rational number and be like whoa that's really cool because i'm in the grounding yada yada and guess what this hertz and frequency is for it says right there it's for pain relief this frequency is generally known for pain relief, yet and it is the only one that I divided by the Schumann resonance, which I've been talking about, grounded to the earth, that came up with a rational number. There's got to be somebody, if I'm the only one that figured that out or found that out, that'd be crazy, and that, I'm, you know, kudos to me, but most likely it's in a book somewhere and somebody knows about it, and if you do know about it, please share it. Share where I could learn about it or share the information with me. I'd love that. But how cool is that? 174 hertz divided by 7.83 is 22.22222222. When you see that, that's a rational number. That means there's a code to be found. There's a message to be found. There's a connection. There's an importance that's sacred, divine, and beautiful. So if every, the more people are grounded, the better this earth is going to be. The less energy from outside sources we are going to require because we will all be on a trickle charge. And we will all be in symbiosis with each other a lot more. So this is my hippy dippy side. This is the practical physical side. Whoever you are, it's everywhere you are. This is grounding. This is earthing. It's the real deal. Give it a try. All right, peace.